Um, okay, so hi uh, everyone. Hopefully you've had a lovely afternoon so far. And thank you, Caitlin, for having me here. Um, so I am a big believer of getting everyone involved uh, doing these calls. Um, I know that personally, if, um, if nothing is happening for about 15 minutes, I stop paying attention. So for the purpose of the session, I'm, I will actually ask you to get involved. So we're gonna play a quiz and we're gonna do uh, a breakout room activity as well. And hopefully you'll have an enjoyable hour uh, with me. So uh, really quickly before I get into the content, uh, to give you a bit of context uh, about what I do. So I work for the Social Switch Project. Um, and back in the day, very long time ago, in 2019, when the world was normal, um, we were launched by Google and we used to deliver sessions at Google Academy, where, which Tech Pathways was a part of as well. Um, but now everything kind of moved to the online world, obviously, and we're now also supported by the Mayor of London's VRU. And the whole idea of the project kind of came about when Google was trying to find different ways to address uh, some of the issues that of the online world and of social media, some of the online harms, but also to try and switch the narrative on social media and what it is for young people, what it means actually to use social media for young people. And so the training that I deliver, um, I usually deliver to professionals who work with young people uh, to try and change their minds a little bit on, uh, you know, on social media. I think a lot of the time, especially with educators a lot of the time, uh, you go straight away to online harms and straight away thinking of all the negatives that come from the online world. Um, but my job is to kind of trying to uh, get everyone thinking about some of the positives for young people as well um, on using social media. And we also have training sessions for young people on digital careers. And we uh, had a grant pot that we distributed to grassroots organizations. So we've been doing a lot of different things in these last few years. Um, if you want to know more, I'm happy to link you uh, to the website or for Caitlin to share uh, my details. Um, but I've tried to reduce my, um, my normally four hour training to a quick one hour and we're gonna um, mostly focus on some of the positives of social media. So uh, we're going to play a little quiz and look at some popular apps. I'm gonna ask you to discuss a few of these apps in more detail. Um, we're also going to take a really quick look on how to start a conversation with a young person uh, about social media and how to um, find, well, how to uh, find some resources around app privacy and community guidelines. And I'm also going to cover a little bit about um, how important social media can be for young people's personal development. And at the end, we're going to learn some simple tips on how to have a more positive um, time online. Okay, so I think before I get into the apps, um, it's really useful to have a quick think about what it is to be a young person and what's kind of going on for young people. And for the purposes of, of you know, talking about these apps, I've identified these four things uh, to focus on. So the first one is risk and motivations for thrills. So young people are more likely to take risks and that definitely applies to social media and the online world. So think sexting or, you know, sharing explicit videos or sharing violent videos or, you know, examples of groups of young people using social media to wind each other up, to rile each other up and challenge each other. Then short term gains. I'm sure those of you who uh, use social media know what it is, what it's like to, you know, have a look at your phone and see that your Instagram picture is getting all these likes and you get that hit of dopamine when you see it. You know, social media short term gains are in abundance and they're immediate. So it provides young people uh, an immediate reward in the form of attention uh, from others online. And then emotional regulation. So adolescents uh, and be, you know, being a young person, you're going through a period of working through a range of heightened emotions. You're more likely to be sensitive to what's going on. You're more likely to be sensitive to criticism online and you're more likely to be reactionary as well. And then desire for independence. So a lot of apps, um, that we, when we think about them, you know, and what young people think that adults don't really go there, they don't really understand what's going on, and it can be quite liberating for young people uh, using these online spaces. So thinking about those things, um, I think it's going to kind of make a bit more sense as we go through uh, taking a look at some apps and the way that young people do use social media as part of their everyday lives. So we're going to play a Kahoot quiz. Um, I'm going to explain to you how it works if you've never played it, but hopefully um, most of you have played it before. Uh, let me just start it off. So you have 20 seconds to answer each, uh, each of these. 
So the first one is a private messaging app that's best known for photos and short videos that are automatically deleted after they're viewed. So nice and easy one to start with. It's a, well, it started off as a private messaging app and that's best known for photos and short videos that are automatically deleted after the viewed. Okay, so most of you got that right. Um, so it is the uh, yellow ghost icon and it is of course Snapchat. Um, there's a lot of different functionalities to Snapchat now. And I will ask you to talk about Snapchat more in breakout rooms. Um, but it did start off um, as an app where the content that you sent got deleted after it was viewed. Okay, so I hope you got the gist. So the second one is an anonymous question and answer app that is used within Snapchat. So an anonymous question and answer app that is used within Snapchat. Okay, so um, some of you got that one right. So it is the yellow icon that says YOLO on it, and the app is called YOLO. Um, and it works within the world of Snapchat, and you can post anonymous questions and comments on people's Snapchat stories. Now, I know it sounds very obscure, but it's actually really, really popular at the moment uh, among young people. Okay, next one. So this is an online gaming platform and game creation system that allows users to program games and to play games created by others. So an online gaming platform where not only you can play games, but you can also program your own games. Okay, more of a mixed bag of answers for this one. So the correct one is the last one, which is the little figure running from a helicopter. And the app is called Roblox. And um, so it, it's been around for a while, but it's become really, really popular recently amongst younger kids. Um, and they can uh, kind of program their own games within the world um, of the app. So it's quite an interesting one to look out for, especially if you have kids yourselves. Okay, so this is a chat service designed for creating communities and it's a lot of the times used by gamers to play with others in real time. So it's a chat service that's designed for creating communities or channels and a lot of the time it's used by gamers to play with others in real time. Okay, so more of you need this one. So it is the purple uh, round icon, that's the correct one. Uh, the app is called uh, Discord. Um, again, it's been around for a while, um, it's become really popular recently and uh, it used to kind of just be for gamers uh, to communicate with each other when, they're, when they were playing online games, but everyone seems to be on it now, including celebrities that have their own channels and stuff like that, so uh, it's really, really popular at the moment as well. Okay, so using Snapchat to connect, users have 10 seconds to live video chat with strangers. So on this app, uh, you have 10 seconds to live video chat with strangers um, and again it works just in the world of snapchat okay well, much more of a mixed bag of answers again so the correct one is the first one is the purple icon with the monkey head um, the app is called Monkey. Wow, I keep changing who's in the first place uh, constantly, but uh, Caitlin's in the first place at the moment, halfway there. And so the app is called Monkey, and just like YOLO, it works within the world of Snapchat. And once you're on the app, it connects you with someone else on the app, and you have 10 seconds to chat to them via live video. All right, halfway there. So this is an app that lets you stream and watch live broadcasts. And again, it's mostly used by the gaming community. So it's a live streaming service. It's an app that lets you watch at, um, and stream yourself doing something as well. So the correct one is the purple icon. Uh, the service is called Twitch. Um, it's, it's a live broadcasting service. And uh, again, it's been around for a really long time and it kind of used to be 
a place for people stream to stream themselves playing video games. But in lockdown, everyone is on it as well. I use it to watch DJ sets on weekends. It kind of makes you feel like you're there a little bit. Uh, but it's a really good service. I do recommend you check it out if you've never heard of it before. Okay, so this app lets you create, share, and discover 15 or up to 60 second videos, and you can use music and effects to enhance them. And I'm gonna assume that most of you have at least heard of this app, if not are on this app uh, yourselves. Absolutely right. So it is of course none other than TikTok. Um, we will be looking at TikTok uh, after this. I'll ask you to discuss in Warren Rooms. And I do um, kind of talk about it quite a bit. Uh, I have been accused of being sponsored by them. I am not yet, but I am in talks <laughs> of being sponsored by them, maybe sometime in the future. Um, but I think TikTok is one of those apps that um, during the first lockdown, everyone downloaded it and um, everyone was on it for a while. Um, whether you're still on it now or not, um, Depends, I guess, on how useful you found it. But it is a really good one. So this is a way for groups to connect via live video. Two to eight people can be in a chat together at the same time, and you can also play games with each other. So a way for groups to connect via live video, and up to eight people can be in a room together at the same time. Okay, so the correct answer is the wavy hand icon. The app is called House Party. So again, uh, one of those apps that exploded in popularity last year. Um, if you've never used it before, um, you can go into rooms and kind of talk to your friends. And the idea is that you feel like you're all in one house party together. Okay, second to last. So this app lets you exchange anonymous, encrypted, and content expiring messages including photos, videos, and file attachments. So it lets you exchange anonymous, encrypted, and content expiring messages. That include photos, videos, and file attachments. Okay, so this is a bit of a more difficult one, but the correct answer is the black uh, icon with two white stripes. Uh, so the app is called Wicker. It, uh, it's not hugely popular in the UK, it's hugely popular in Europe. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like WhatsApp, uh, but it's completely anonymous and you can select a time limit on how long someone can view your message. And it's used by some businesses to place encrypted uh, conference calls or to uh, share uh, confidential documents as well. So. And then the last one. So this is an app that's designed to make new friends by swiping right or left on their pictures. Now I know it sounds like Tinder, uh, it's not, uh, but it is an app where you swipe right or left on people's pictures based on whether you want to talk to them or not. So the correct answer is the yellow icon that kind of looks like a laughing face. So the app is called Yubo. Um, it's really, very really popular at the moment as well. It's quite a new one. Um, and it kind of works like Tinder, but um, the creators of the app claim that it's to make new friends. Uh, but a lot of the times it's kind of talked about as Tinder for teens because most of its users are under 18. Okay, so let's see who made it onto the podium. So in third place, we have P, don't know what your actual name is, but in second place, you have Caitlin, well done, Caitlin. And in first place, we have LJW, well done, you guys. Um, <laughs> um, so obviously, you know, I don't expect everyone to kind of know all of these. Um, but, uh, and you know, you have to change all the time, but it is quite interesting to test on how many apps you actually are aware of um, when working the EMP one. All of these are actually very, very popular at the moment, so. Uh, but for this next part of this activity, I would like you to talk about two of these apps in more detail amongst yourselves in breakout rooms. So um, I'll give uh, one room Snapchat and one room TikTok. So hopefully kind of 
um, together you have enough knowledge um, around these apps to discuss them. But if you don't, you can always kind of look them up on Google or, um, or in the app store. But before the rooms are open, I'll give you 10 minutes uh, to chat amongst yourselves about them. And then we'll do a really quick feedback session when you come back. What I want you to talk about is why do young people love the app so much? So think of the positives of the app. You know, is it dog ear filters that they are so attractive to young people? Is it maybe making followers, getting attention, you know, being able to follow challenges? So think of all the positives around the app and why it's so popular at the moment. And then also think of some of the risks of young people using this app. So feel free to make notes um, if you want in your breakout rooms. I'm sure you are aware of how to use the whiteboard function, but you don't have to. Uh, you can just chat amongst yourselves. And then when you come back after 10 minutes, I will ask you to kind of share with the rest of us on what you've discussed about these apps. So uh, Caitlin, if you could open the rooms and then after 10 minutes, if you could close them uh, for everyone to come back. Uh, I have named the breakout rooms as well. One is named Snapchat, one is named ah, That's perfect. Thank um, you so much. So I will pop you in your breakout rooms now and in 10 minutes, I will uh, have you back. Perfect, thank you, Caitlin. All right, perfect. So welcome back everyone. Hopefully you've had some interesting discussions uh, amongst yourself in the rooms. Uh, so I will ask you to really quickly share with the rest of us on what you've discussed. Um, so we'll start with room one, who had Snapchat. Would anyone from room one like to share? Uh, I can step in, if anyone, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Sam, take, take one for the team. <laughs> it seems like I'm being nudged forward <laughs> by others. Okay. Um, um, you would never. <laughs> <laughs> it's at that moment when like you're standing in a line and then everyone else steps back and you're the only one. Oh. Oh, I feel um, bad now. I'll, I'll come yeah. forward. <laughs> um, so Snapchat is a, we were just saying actually, uh, it, it's a, we didn't really get onto this until quite late in the conversation. It's primarily a visual app um, where you send photos to your friends. Um, and it, it has this great sense of immediacy. And because the photos basically self destruct after 24 hours, um, it's uh, a sort of, it's, you know, by design, it's a very current thing. You get the sense of being the feeling of connectedness to your friends um it's also and this is like a personal kind of um uh soapbox that i like to get up on it is designed explicitly to be addictive um absolutely uh, yeah but um it, it is also an enriching way you know so that people can actually uh feel in touch with their friends um it does have some strange distorting effects in terms of um uh we talked about streaks um, so this is a kind of a device within, like there's kind of a, uh, it's almost like an Easter egg. It's like a sort of hidden thing that then like, you get rewarded for when it happens. Um, uh, where if you send each other a message within a day, um, and then you do that multiple days in a row, that's called a streak and mm -hmm. you keep your streak going. And if you miss a day, it resets to zero. So you can imagine in the kind of, uh, school social setting, um, you know, to anybody who isn't familiar with this, it seems like a very trivial thing. It's like, oh yeah, it's a little ditty, whatever. But you know, in, in certain contexts, those are high stakes. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's like a measurable way of seeing how good friends you are, like how long has your streak been going and stuff like that. So um, people have been reported doing so otherwise, you know, quite unexplainably weird uh, behaviors in order to keep a streak going. Um, so yeah, and, and then also like, it, basically the way Snapchat works is a bit like, if anybody has Instagram, it's like Instagram stories. Um, but it's like that, but on steroids. So like the filters are completely wacky and yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks Sam, you seem to know a lot about Snapchat and how it works. <laughs> I've kidding. not used it for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, me neither actually, but um... But yeah, no, I, I think you're very right. It's, it's it's created to be addictive and everything that they add on, um, all the new features that they add on are to make it more and more addictive. So uh, it gets people on it all the time, to use it all the time. But yeah, thank you. Thanks, Sam, and thank you, uh, room number one. Uh, so room number two we had TikTok. Would anyone from that room like to share? I'll share if people don't, don't want to. Really? Okay. Um, the interesting thing about our room was that we 
we sort of as a group said that we were the wrong demographic for TikTok. So actually what we ended up doing is not discussing in detail, like Sam had talked about in the snapshot about how it worked. We knew, we know vaguely how it worked, is that the videos on there and such like that. But what it did is it simulated a conversation about that there's this kind of unspoken rule with, or I don't know, a social contract with certain apps that, are, that you are not, a bit like shops you wouldn't go into after a certain age or after a certain age you've been going to certain bars or things like, like that, that it's, it, yeah. <laughs> it's not for you that you'll be kind of like a bit like the weirdo in there if you're if you're in there you, and as 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 um someone said that that um that what it was is is the fact that actually you'd feel a bit weird in the sense you would look be looking at your at young you know your your students what they're doing and that's not what you want. you want it's almost like it's their place it's their time they don't want you there kind of thing look you've got Facebook go away <laughs> you're right yeah okay so um so that's what and we thought that was quite interesting it is it is and you know what another thing about TikTok actually is how how it works is because of the algorithm of TikTok how it 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 kind of what you see on your page is kind of videos that they think you would like and so what you're saying is right but i think so i use tiktok a lot as a as a lady near her 30s but um what what i see on my tiktok page is really really different on what uh someone let's say 15 would see i don't get recommended you know dance challenges or all that kind of stuff just because tiktok thinks that i wouldn't be interested in that and they're right actually um, so I think even though adults, some adults are on TikTok, they are, are in their own little kind of space. And then young people have a separate part of TikTok that we, we're not allowed into and we don't, we don't get invited to and we don't see. So, but that's a really good point. I think, yeah, I think young people do think you're on TikTok. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Why are you there kind of thing? And um, anything else you talked about before I move on? Uh, I think... Uh and also that that developed onto a conversation about on these social apps you are sending out to the world but in effect because there is this unspoken kind of of self-filtering about who who uses that app and you've said there's even subgroups in that it's actually you're sending it's it's your own echo chamber you think you're sending it out to you to people like you but in effect you're sending out to the world yeah absolutely Brilliant. Well, thank you, Louise. <laughs> and thank you, Room 2. Well, thank you to my group. It was Again, a really good Sounds like you had some really interesting chats about it. Um, yeah, TikTok is a weird one. And TikTok is one that I really like. Um, I like bringing up a lot and I like talking about a lot just because of how, how popular it is. But I think a good way to kind of look at apps and to think about apps is, is to kind of think about what the main features of the apps are. So a lot of them will have something, like a few features that are really, really attractive to young people. And then at the same time, uh, usually those same features can pose a risk to young people using them. So for example, you know, with someone, something like TikTok, you know, it's really, it's really public and everything you post can be shared, uh, you know, very uh, wide and, you know, you don't even have to have TikTok at this point to see everything that's going on on it because it's posted on every other platform. So Instagram Reels, which is a rip off of TikTok, is all just TikTok content, you know, even on Facebook, you see that content everywhere. So it can be really, you know, nice for young people to be able to, you know, get that attention, get those likes, get you know comments, make new friends, even make money uh, off it, which some some young people do to kind of feel as a part of this really big, big world. But at the same time, you know, it's hard to monitor where your content is going to end up. Uh, you know, whether someone will get bullied because of it, uh, they can be contacted by anyone. Uh, on the app so uh, or you know if it's let's say an app is anonymous you know it can be nice for young people to be able to express themselves uh, freely but at the same time again it can be regulated and there's so many risks that come to that so I think a way to kind of look at a lot of these apps and the online world is you know is look at those main attraction look at that main attraction of those apps and then think about the ways that it could uh, be risky for young people um, because I think you know, keeping keeping track of all the apps that are out there all the time is near to impossible. Believe me, I know because I try to for work work purposes. Um, but it's really really hard to kind of keep track of what's going on out there um, and how many apps are being used at the moment in time. And I think, you know, a lot of young people that I work with through this project 
uh, always say that they are more than happy to talk about the apps that they're using to kind of show to show us you know what those apps are and what you can and cannot do on the on those apps and i think it is quite interesting to have those conversations with young people you know not just about you know uh, what those apps are and what how they're using it but uh, and um what apps are using but how they're using those apps so you know get them to think about what they're sharing on these apps, whether they're sharing any personal details, whether they're sharing something explicit and, you know, who they're talking to, you know, who's contacting them on those apps. Um, also, you know, talking to them about whether they know how to navigate the app where it comes to, you know, blocking people, uh, reporting people, managing their privacy settings, controlling what they're able to see. And there's a lot of resources out there to kind of help out with that. Um, also asking young people to think about how much they're sharing. Uh, I think oversharing is a really big part of, of you know, a young person's life. Because, and now because of social media, it can be really, really, you know, it can be really damaging for young people and get them to think about what the consequences are of oversharing uh, on those apps and, you know, how it might affect them in the real world. Um, and then also if there's something else going on um, in their lives, you know, that's kind of linked to what they're doing. So if they're you know, using TikTok primarily to kind of, you know, share stuff and post videos of themselves. Maybe there's something else going on and maybe, um, maybe there will be a different outlet for them uh, to express their creativity rather than kind of just purely being on social media, uh, which I'll be talking about in a second. But uh, to kind of finish off talking about apps, uh, you know, every platform has some rules, has some community guidelines. And I think it's quite important when thinking about apps for us is to, to think about um, flagging and reporting content on those apps and helping young people flag and report content on those apps to make sure that uh, the online world is a little bit safer for all of us. And all apps have their own community guidelines, but what's uh, not allowed on all these apps is what I put on the screen. So it's online abuse, harassment and bullying, threats, impersonation, and what to sexual advances, violent content, self-harm and suicide content, and pornographic content. And so all these platforms, you know, you can report all of these to the platforms directly. You can report it to um, a really convenient website called reportharmfulcontent.com, which are really, really good actually at uh, providing support, especially if you've made a report to a platform directly and uh, they haven't responded or a lot of the time uh, as they respond with saying this does not violate our community guidelines which happened to me so many times even though it clearly does and then there's um all these other places to report to i really don't <laughs> think that you're going to remember all of this but i'm happy to uh, share some resources after this uh, on where to go and report stuff but there's internet watch foundation uh for child sexual abuse images actually they were on the news today uh, if anyone is seen talking about um uh, you know how um, online abuse is changing in the lockdown world and how uh, I, I think they were talking about sibling abuse but that was um, if anyone's read the news today that was uh, a report by Internet Watch Foundation and then there's CEOP for uh, for grooming uh, there's ACT for terrorist related content and there's True Vision for uh, hate speech but there's a lot of kind of places out there that you can go to uh, for support and help when it comes to all these apps. But as I said, I think keeping track of all the apps that are out there is next to impossible. And what's popular now might not be popular in a month or you know in a year. And young people are really good at helping us, kind of helping you stay up to date with what's going on and staying up to date with all these apps that they're using at the moment. And so it is quite interesting to talk to them about it uh, when you're working with them. Um, and then um, taking a quick look at you know how young people use social media as part of themselves as, as an um, um, as, and as part of as their personal development um, as part of kind of growing up. So I don't want to talk too much about, you know, stats or kind of different uh, research papers, but I will mention a few uh, here. So uh, starting to, with physical and mental health. So as an example of physical health, uh, a study published by Young Minds and the Children's Society uh, found that young people with physical disabilities who might otherwise feel socially isolated, um, you know, they could uh, find a sense of community and belonging online, uh, especially when the barriers to face-to-face -face interactions, for example, mobility uh, issues um, are removed. And online gaming is kind of a great example of that. It can have a destigmatizing effect uh, for young people due to the social elements uh, of playing video games and where they otherwise might be left out, for example, in a game of football, if you're thinking about mobility issues, let's say. And also through social media, young people are exposed to so many different uh, stories, so many different people out there, they're, whether they're, you know, following people on YouTube or watching TikToks or reading blogs, and it can really help them improve their understanding and knowledge around different health issues. 
I think it really, uh, TikTok is a really good uh, platform for, for that. There's so many people on there, you know, sharing their lives and sharing their experiences. Um, and because they're doing it themselves, it doesn't feel kind of like, uh, and forgive me for the word, but it, like inspiration porn, which is kind of something that has been talked about a lot recently and how a lot of the times in the media, you know, people that are suffering with, uh, that are suffering with certain health issues, that, let's say, or have disabilities, are kind of used as an example of something really inspiring or whatever it is. But actually, you know, young people on these platforms, being able to share their own lives and kind of talk about their own lives and just be a part of that world can be really, really nice for them. And, and I personally also, you know, kind of always like to to learn more about different, uh, you know, different conditions and different health issues. So, uh, recent, uh, recently, I came across this young young woman on TikTok who has Tourette syndrome, and I don't know if any of you know a lot about it, but all I've ever known about it was was from uh, films, which was always very uh, kind of you know was always parroting it, like people that swear uncontrollably. But I came across this young lady who who's sharing her kind of experiences of everyday life and kind of going to a restaurant, for example, or getting a haircut. And it's all really, really positive and it's all really nice. And it's her being able to share her life, but also laugh at herself um, and kind of, you know, let everyone in uh, and let everyone have a glimpse of, you know, her everyday experiences. And I think the same goes for mental health as well. So when young people are facing a challenging life experience or a traumatic event or an episode of poor mental health, they frequently turn to social media platforms to share their experiences, to look for information, for advice, for support, or sometimes just to make sense of what's happening to them and what's going on. And it can be really, really rewarding for a young person to come across someone on you know, YouTube or TikTok that's talking about something similar like uh, you know, depression or uh, anxiety or eating disorders. And there's a lot of young people on social media really openly sharing their experiences um, of that. And considering how many people, how many young people are struggling to access mental health services, uh, especially in the recent uh, year, um, it can be, social media can um, make a positive contribution to them in that sense. And it's also not just maybe mental health conditions or anything, but you can, young people can also find like-minded individuals. For example, if someone's going through um, you know, body image issues or, you know, going, um, struggling with their sexual identity, social media can help them develop in confidence and feel less lonely. So according to a study that Internet Matters did, uh, more than half of 13 to 16 year olds said that during times when they felt alone, social media has provided a solution to their loneliness, whether it's just reaching out to friends, but, um, but also maybe making new friends or just receiving positive comments and support and advice. Um, on one of these platforms. And then another uh, positive uh, thing is young people supporting uh, not just each other, but also uh, promoting social causes that they care about um, and being able to express themselves creatively. So nearly seven in 10 teenagers reported receiving support on social media during tough and challenging times, which kind of stems from the previous research that was done on that. And then uh, Ofcom did a, a survey where they found that almost half of 13 to 18 year olds said that they've shown support online for a certain group in the last year, whether it's, you know, supporting LGBTQ plus rights, whether it's supporting, um, whether it's something to do with the climate uh, emergency or more recently last summer uh, with the Black Lives Matter movement. And social media platforms are also places where young people uh, can really express themselves creatively and share, uh, share creative content. I don't know if any of you have ever tried to make a video on TikTok, a good video on TikTok, I'm assuming not, but it's not very easy. Um, and, you know, so young, for young people being able to kind of produce their own creative content on social media can be really, really rewarding. And um, also being able to like and follow pages or people uh, or, you know, groups uh, means that young people can kind of uh, build an identity catalog for themselves that could, you know, not maybe represent them as a person now or maybe something that they would want to represent them in the future. But what all these kind of stats that I mentioned, all this research really tells us is that young people are consciously carving out for themselves identities and that are further shaped by the online world and by their ability to express themselves creatively, to share their ideas, to voice and discuss opinions, to um, reach out to like-minded people and to support uh, social causes that they care about and support each other online as well. But on the other hand, um, I think a lot of what we and young people put out there on social media is not always genuine and a lot of it can be designed um, purely to get attention and to get likes. Um, I'm going to play this quite funny video. It's called, Are You Living in Insta Lie? 
um, and it kind of presents some different scenarios on how young people uh, might choose to present themselves online. Let me just share my sound, even though it's just music, but there we go. So I don't know if any of you guys are guilty of uh, any of these in the video, those of you who do use social media, I know I'm definitely guilty of at least a few, a few of these kind of behaviors, but there's many ways that young people, you know, may choose to behave online and may choose to belong to online communities. And it can result, as I kind of said, in positive, in really positive consequences for their development. But we also understand that just like in the offline world, young, young people's sense of belonging may come under threat. And these feelings of not belonging can be really intensified online because your phone is always there, you can't really escape it, and your actions are instantaneous as well. And the video demonstrates relatively harmless uh, ways of seeking validation online and trying to kind of fit in and get those likes in. But it can also lead to young people doing riskier things online to get attention and validation. So young people acting online without thinking about, you know, some of the consequences can result in something uh, a bit more severe. Uh, you know, think of, you know, gang violence. And I mean, that's quite an extreme example, but it could, could result in something more serious for them. So having an understanding of why young people choose to behave in specific ways online and the knock-on effect of those behaviors can help us better understand uh, how we can provide support to them, you know, how we can begin having positive and constructive conversations with them about, about what they're doing online and what kind of help they might be susceptible to. But kind of um, before I kind of finish off with, uh, with um, something else, I think, 
you know, young people's behavior online really is really reflective of their own offline development. So they're exploring their identities, they're building self-confidence, um, and they're learning how to make adult decisions. And during the spirit of transition, impulsive behavior and poor decision-making is inevitable, um, but helping them to slow down and to think about what they're doing and to process their emotions before engaging in risky online behaviors can be really, really helpful uh, to them in the long run. Uh, but before I finish, uh, before I finish off, I would like you to leave you with some uh, helpful advice from young people, um, some helpful tips on how to have a more positive experience online, some really simple uh, steps that we can all take to have a better experience on social media. So this video is uh, by Young Minds. Um, it's, um, it's on YouTube. It's really, really good. Um, let me just get it now. How you experience social media can affect your mood. If you're constantly seeing something that makes you angry or stressed. Jealous or frustrated. It can build up and start having a negative impact on your life. But there are things you can do to own your feed and have a more positive time online. And we've got three steps to get you started. The first step to owning your feed is cleaning your feed. A good way to clean your feed is ask yourself how each post makes you feel. Does it make you angry? Maybe you should mute that person for a bit or unfollow. Does it make you bored? Maybe it's not worth your time. Happy you're inspired? Keep it coming. Remember, it's your feed. It's up to you who you follow. The second step to owning your feed is to use social media to find like-minded people who share your passions. No matter what you're into or what you're going through, there are people out there that feel the same way that you do. You're not weird. You're not a freak. And you're certainly not alone. You can use social media to figure out who you are, what makes you tick and get help with the stuff you're dealing with. The third step to owning your feed is to make sure you're not just watching, you're part of it. And it can make you feel so much better to get involved. Why not DM someone you haven't seen for a while and ask how they are? Or tag a friend in something that makes you smile. Or just leave a positive comment to cheer somebody up. You never know, it might make a difference to someone to show them that you're there. Take these three steps to take control of your feed and have a more positive time online. Start owning your feed now. You've got this. Let's do it. So some nice, helpful, um, helpful tips by young people, to young people and to all of us um, on how to have more positive experience online. Um, so checking your feed and kind of um, asking yourself, you know, if, if what you're seeing makes you feel good um, or, you know, you might, or if you want to unfollow uh, a person or a page, I mean, it can be really, really easy to unfriend uh, someone. Um, and then using social media to check in so not just kind of watching what's going on but and I, i'm sure that a lot of us have been using social media for that purpose um you know in all these lockdowns that have been going on uh, because that might be the only way for us to keep in touch with people but it is quite important to you know to to check in with others uh, or maybe you know just leaving a positive comment somewhere can really be, be helpful for young people and for the person on the receiving end as well and another one that i've included here is being able to check out so i think it's really important for young people to be able to to, to disengage from social media and to disengage from their phones um, and can be really helpful for them to kind of um, think about their emotions before posting something, before sharing something online and using technology on, our, on their phone to give themselves some downtime from social media as well. Uh, you can restrict uh, the time you spend on your apps. It can be very scary to have a look at how much time you've spent on apps. Um, I know it is for me. Sometimes it's like, oh, you spend three hours on TikTok today. Um, but you can restrict actually the time spent on your apps and it can be really helpful for young people. There's also night mode or night shift, I think it's called on, on, on iPhones. Um, and also there's loads of different wellness apps uh, to, to be able to, for, to help young people to use social media uh, in a more healthy and productive way. So if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to ask. If not, uh, then that's me. Fabulous. Thank you, Christina. Uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions for Christina, please do pop them in the chat now. We'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. Uh, Christina, I particularly like the thing that you said sort of early doors about 
talking to young people about what they're doing on apps and that actually they're quite willing to have those conversations. Um, and I think that sort of runs counter to what, what we might assume. I, you know what, I, I get that a lot as well, but you know, like I, I kind of used to think that before I started doing this as well, that young people can be really secretive about the things that they do online, but actually uh, throughout this project, working with young people, they are more than happy for you to ask them to show, to, to, to ask, you know, they can show you on their phones what they're doing and they're really excited to talk about all these different apps that they're using, all the different things that they're doing on these apps. They're actually always very, very open and willing to talk about them, I find. Um, if anything, they're quite excited to show you how, you know, this gaming app works or whatever it is. And then, you know, these starting these conversations can lead to, to then talking about more serious things. So let's say, you know, um, if they're showing you some new gaming app that's online, you can then talk to them about whether they know, you know, who who they're talking to or, you know, know about sharing things on it and stuff like that. So, um, but I think young people do get really excited talking about, about different apps out there.